Hey everyone, Steve Monette here with another video in my Bible Prophecy Bite series where we look at Bible scripture, history, and current events that all point to the soon return of Jesus the Messiah. Okay, so for today's video, I want to talk very briefly about the Psalm 83 war. And the reason I want to talk about this is that many so-called prophecy teachers have been making videos in the last two weeks or so, uh, insisting that this most recent Israeli-Hamas conflict is a prelude to the Psalm 83 war and that it has to happen before the return of Jesus the Messiah. But when I listen to these so-called teachers and I watch their videos, it makes me wonder, does anybody read a history book these days? Case in point, I spent a total of 45 minutes doing research for this particular video. And I did it while I was at work on duty using an iPad, a borrowed pencil, and a piece of scrap paper. And in those you know, roughly 30 to 45 minutes, I was able to match up Bible scripture with modern day historical events, proving that the Psalm 83 war has in fact already occurred. And to prove this point, I wanna show you exactly what I found. Okay, so in this slide, I've put together a spreadsheet with three columns. In column number one, I have listed the parties involved in the Psalm 83 war. We have Edom, Ishmaelites, Moab, the Hagarenes, Gibal, Ammon, Amalek, Philistia, Tyre, and Assyria. And to get this information, I use Blue Letter Bible to confirm this information just by simply looking at Psalm 83. Now, in the second column, we have the Psalm 83 participants and their modern day locations. Again, this information was very easy to find through historical and archeological evidence. And if I can do it in less than 30 minutes, so can you. Now, the evidence tells us that Edom, Moab, and Ammon are located in modern day Jordan. The Ishmaelites are what is now called modern day Saudi Arabia. Gibal is modern day Lebanon. Amalek is modern day Egypt and Philistia is better known as Gaza. Tyre and the Hagarenes are located in Syria, and Assur and Assyria are both located in the area of modern day Iraq. Now, this third column ties everything together into a single slide where you can see everything. In this third column, we have the names of the parties that attacked Israel in 1948. And this information can be confirmed through any modern day web-based search engine or encyclopedia, if you even still have those types of books around your house. And guess what? The Arab countries that attacked Israel in 1948 are the very same parties listed in Psalm 83 and their modern day geographical locations. And they are the Palestinians, Egypt, Syria, Jordan, Lebanon, Iraq, and Saudi Arabia. Now, if that isn't enough evidence for you, I have even more. In Psalm 83, verses 4 through 5, the parties are prophesied to form an alliance and will state that they want to cut off Israel from being a nation and to essentially wipe them off the map so that Israel will not be remembered anymore. Well, guess what? That is exactly what these parties did one day, 24 hours, after Israel became a nation. And again, history proves this. On May 15th, 1948, the Arab nations did just this. They formed an alliance, and they publicly stated that their goal was to wipe Israel off the map. And, and here are a few quotes from 1948 to prove my point. If such a state is to be established, it can only be established over our dead bodies. And the Arabs have taken into their own hands the final solution of the Jewish problem. The problem will be solved only in blood and fire, and then the Jews will soon be driven out. And if the Jewish state becomes a fact, and this is realized by the Arab peoples, they will drive the Jews who live in their midst into the sea. 
And finally, one last piece of evidence. The writer of Psalm 83 requests that the name of God would be made known to the entire world as a result of defeating of Israel's enemies in this case. And that, again, that is exactly what happened when Israel defeated all of the Arab nations during that 1948 war. In fact, history tells us that the Arab states had 63,000 well-trained soldiers and military assets, while Israel had approximately 25,000. And again, Israel was a nation that was only 24 hours old. And their military consisted of a bunch of ragtag volunteers. But they had the hand of God on their side. And even to this day, the Arabs know that God was with the Israelites because they have publicly stated as much. So, in closing, why did I even make this video? <laughs> Is this the subject matter of salvation? No, of course not. Does the Psalm 83 war need to occur before the coming of Jesus the Messiah? No, absolutely not. I really did this video for one primary reason, and that is to get Bible prophecy students to look back into history and not just to the future. You see, God wrote down his plan some 4,000 years ago, and it has been steadily unfolding ever since. Whether it was the first coming of Jesus, or the covenant with many that Jesus confirmed with his blood, the rebirth of the nation of Israel, the revealing of the Antichrist, or the Psalm 83 war. Not all prophecy is in the future. Much has already occurred, and there is still more to come. But not everything is in the future. You see, history proves the existence of God, and history has confirmed much of his prophetic word. And in this case, history proves the Psalm 83 war has already occurred. So for you Bible prophecy students, please, Take a moment and ask yourself a question whenever you read about a prophetic event. Ask yourself this one question. Did it or has it already occurred in history? If the answer is no, then look to the future. Don't just blindly look, look to the future. It's not a good way to, to, to study the Bible prophecy. So until next video, keep looking up. For our redemption draws near. Thanks for watching.